Throughout the rich history of Dark Souls since its release in 2011, speedrunners have discovered many groundbreaking strategies and exploits that have come to define the game. Moose Whooping allows quick double hits with heavy weapons, while the Prom Swap glitch made becoming a millionaire easy. They even found a use for something as basic as switching from one weapon to another, also known as toggling. It can be utilized to save precious time by speeding up the acceleration when sprinting, which I covered in detail in another video. It turns out, however, that this rather simple act of toggling has another, much more significant effect. One that has only recently been understood, but one that has massive implications for how the game can be played. With specific frame-perfect toggles, it is possible to cause the enemy AI to malfunction, leaving it open to attacks. But how exactly does this glitch work? And what kind of weapons and setups are needed to trigger it? In this video, we'll dive deep into the mechanics of the AI break glitch, uncover the secrets behind this fascinating exploit, and explore how players use it to their advantage in the most competitive speedruns. Let's begin! But before that, let's take a moment to appreciate another game where AI breaking isn't as easy, Final Fantasy XIV. You probably know that it is an MMORPG that invites you to explore the vast world of Yorzia. But why should you, a fan of From Software games, give Final Fantasy XIV a shot? Well, let me tell you. I myself was a bit skeptical at first, but after spending a couple tens of hours playing it on my stream, I've been hooked. Firstly, it offers challenging boss encounters reminiscent of the battles in Dark Souls, Bloodborne and Elden Ring. The game's raids and trials push your skills to the limit as you deal with unique mechanics and attack patterns. Secondly, the game's expansive world provides countless opportunities for exploration and discovery, much like the interconnected worlds of From Software games. Finally, the game's class and job system offers a level of customization and playstyle variety that's making every build viable, all on one character. So if you want to get a bit of the Miyazaki magic in an MMO form, look no further than Final Fantasy IV. Try it for free with access to the base game and the first expansion, Heaven's Ward, without subscription fees. Available on Windows and Mac, as well as PlayStation 4 and 5, your progress carries over if you upgrade to the full game. If you decide to give the game a shot, the easiest way is using the link in the description. Feel free to let me know if you do. Now, let's get back to Lordran. Over the years, Dark Souls players have noticed that performing certain actions in the equipment menu or swapping weapons near enemies can sometimes cause the AI to appear delayed. While this may sound like an advantage, it was the opposite in most cases. The AI would commonly break at the start of boss battles, as players changed equipment while entering the fog wall. You see, in Dark Souls 1, it is impossible to sprint while the menu is open, so to save time, runners menu while they are stuck in other animations such as climbing ladders or indeed entering fog walls. But this can lead to the boss being extremely unpredictable, either not attacking the player or straight up doing nothing. As a result, the prepared boss fight strategies could be thrown into disarray. Occasionally, it even led to something called a bulldozer, where the boss rapidly runs into the player without performing other actions. Allure. Allure! What? Whoa! The best thing players could do was avoid excessive menuing when near enemies whose AI they did not want to break, as it was difficult to pinpoint exactly why or how this was happening. For example, in this 2020 any% percent speedrun, I decided to remove my Pyromancer armor far away from Quailag's arena rather than upon entry, even though it cost me a bit of time. There have been a few attempts to reveal the secrets behind the AI breaks. Sastutin in 2020 tried using a macro for consistent weapon switching inputs and ran around the same set of enemies from a consistent safe file location. While he did not find anything significant, he did notice that he got zero AI breaks when toggling while his weapon slots were empty. It seemed that it wasn't the action of toggling that was causing the glitch, but something else related to it. This suspicion was confirmed in late 2021, when glitch hunter Androv T and legendary speedrunner Kumul figured out its basic mechanics. So what really happens? Analysis of footage of accidental AI breaks showed that the AI would resume its normal function about 5 seconds after the toggle that caused it to break. Thus, Androv used task tools to create perfectly timed inputs. After reloading the game, he gradually delayed the toggle around the 5 second mark until the AI broke. He found that this happened when he toggled 151 frames after reloading in the game's original version, running at 30 frames per second. This delay was 300 frames for the 60fps remaster. It also meant that the timer always started on the first frame of the loaded game. So at this point, we knew when to try and switch weapons. But why did the AI break? What kind of 151 frame timer was being abused? 
And what was so special about toggling? The last question would be the first answered. Using the debug version of the game, Kumul discovered that toggling actually puts the player in an unloaded state. The state lasts for exactly 3 frames. The dot next to the model signals the load state. As you can see, it briefly flashes when toggling. However, you have to switch between two different weapons for the unloading to happen, confirming Sastutin's suspicion from a year ago. Simply switching between empty slots or two identical weapons didn't do anything. That is because the game needs to update the player model for the unload to happen. If no equipment changes, no updating occurs. I also mentioned that the accidental AI breaks happened when menuing at fog walls. It occurs because changing or equipping new gear unloads the player for 4 frames, while removing that gear unloads them for 3. Whatever was happening, it had to do with the game considering the player character to be unloaded at the end of the 151 frame timer. Incomplete understanding of the glitch didn't stop the speedrunners from immediately trying to find places where this might be useful. One boss fight immediately came to mind. Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn's battle begins with the player running toward the enemy, who teleports away. They must then dodge incoming attacks, find an opening, and deal as much damage as possible before another teleport. Yet, if the first teleport could be prevented by breaking the AI, Gwendolyn could be effectively killed in zero teleports. Still, there were several problems with successfully timing a toggle so it lined up with a cycle of the 151 frame timer. First, it is impossible to see the timer ticking down, so blindly trying to toggle was out of the question. The second obvious solution was to try to chain multiple pre-planned actions together, ending with a toggle that would unload the player on the 151st frame. It could work if these actions were connected frame perfectly without any delay. This is the same concept of frame killing from fighting games, by the way. After scoring a knockdown on an opponent, players can perform attacks lasting an exact number of frames while the opponent is down, so that the next attack hits on the first frame of the opponent's stand-up. In Dark Souls, many animations can be queued from one to another, so frame-perfect links are possible. However, remember that the chain has to begin from a save and quit, as that is the only reliable starting point for the mysterious 151 frame timer. So the sequence will always start with a stand-up animation. And that's a problem, because no action can be queued during the stand-up that would consistently come out immediately after it. No action, except one. You see, there is a quirk inside the equipment menu. Using a button to unto-hand the weapon while standing up doesn't queue the action. But two-handing a weapon and then changing equipment in a different weapon slot will cause the game to automatically unto-hand the held weapon. The same thing happens when a weapon is upgraded at the blacksmith. This unto-handing animation plays as soon as the stand-up animation finishes. As such, we can save and quit while two-handed, then swap equipment while standing up, resulting in a frame-perfect chain of unto-handing. From there, it is possible to queue up other actions, such as rolling or toggling, without any delay between them and continue the chain as desired. Now, it is just a matter of figuring out the length of each action and theorizing a setup where a weapon toggle coincides with the 151st frame of the timer cycle. Since the update happens during one frame, and the toggle unloads the character for three frames, there is some leniency in the setups, but it remains somewhat tricky. Animations in Dark Souls have a lot of minor differences that are never noticeable in casual play, but can make a huge difference when designing a setup like this. Toggling with different weapon types or toggling with different hands can change the length of the animation by a few frames. Thus, using special tools to examine these actions was crucial to gaining enough understanding to design consistent setups. Well, when these setups were perfected, it led to this. Gwendolyn in Zero Cycles. A huge pain in the butt luck based boss was completely revamped and made entirely dependent on the player's skill. I will explain the chain in more detail, but first, let's see what truly happens behind the scenes. About two months after this finding, Kumul, using the debug version of the game, discovered that the game keeps an internal list of characters for the AI to target. This list of targets is updated periodically after a certain amount of time 151 frames. That's our cycle. 
The list needs to be updated because objects and characters can be loaded and deloaded based on distance from the enemy or by simply dying. If the player is not on the list, the AI will not update its current state. This means that if the boss is on standby before the fight, it will remain that way. It also means that if the boss's next move is approaching the player and the player suddenly disappears from the list, the AI cannot update that action to an attack and will simply keep approaching. This explains the bulldozer behavior mentioned earlier in the video. Fucking bulldozer! God <laughs> it was also discovered, however, that attacking the enemy makes the player targetable regardless of the list's state. Therefore, it is impossible to attack a boss, use those attacks as part of an action chain and keep the AI broken with toggles in between. Fortunately, Dark Souls speedruns wouldn't turn into a complete toggle simulator. With a much better understanding of the AI break glitch, the runners quickly got to work trying to find setups for other boss fights. The notorious run killer Ornstein and Smo was at the top of the list, but the fact that bosses fight back when attacked made it problematic for the all bosses category where three moose swapped running attacks are required to kill Ornstein. The 100% category, on the other hand, only requires two such attacks, so an AI break setup worked for the first phase of the fight. From there, chains for Nito or Moonlight Butterfly were developed. as well as setups not involving bosses. Right before the Stray Demon encounter, AI Break disables the Torch Hollows in front of the fight, allowing the player to run straight through them. The same strategy can be applied to the Hollow Room in Undead Parish, full of dangerous enemies, or the Royal Woods with its farmers. Overall, AI Breaking allowed speedrunners to avoid painful, luck-based bosses like Gwendolyn, making them dependent on the player's skill. At the same time, the boss's ability to fight back once attacked kept the speedrun from becoming an action sequence simulator where all enemy AI could be disabled. A perfect medium. Let's take a closer look at one of these chains as more things complicate their design, and there's no better chain for this than the first one, Gwendolyn. The player starts by doing a save and quit to get a consistent starting point for the timer while two-handed. When they reload, both the timer and the stand-up animation begin on the first frame of gameplay. This is always true, except for the invasion stand-up animation, which starts 3 frames later for some reason, but that's not relevant for most runs. Then the player removes a weapon from a separate slot, so the character immediately unto-hands the currently held weapon. Gwendolyn's AI doesn't activate until the fight is entered, so the upcoming toggles ensure that we always enter the fog gate at the same time, meaning the AI timer is at a consistent value. However, entering the fog cannot be queued, so this is where the first detail comes into play. After this last toggle, we must enter as fast as possible and pay attention to how long the Enter for Gate prompt appears. If it's swift, we know we've entered early and need to use a different setup after the fog than if we took longer. Since toggling unloads the player for 3 frames, one setup can cover entry frames 1, 2 and 3 based on how long it took to enter the fog wall after the last toggle. Another setup will cover frames 4, 5 and 6. In this case, we entered quickly. Now, when we enter the cutscene, the AI timer pauses, so there is no need to skip it frame perfectly. However, another oddity appears as the cutscene is passed. On the first frame of gameplay, the AI timer advances by one frame as expected, but the current animation actually progresses by two frames. So when calculating animation chains for bosses with cutscenes, it is essential to consider an extra frame being skipped and subtracted from the animation length. This also means that if you're retrying a boss fight that has a cutscene on the first encounter, but not on the repeat, such as ONS, you'll need different setups. This is a little harder to imagine, but bear with me, I'll do my best to explain. Let's say we do a setup and end up entering the fog gate on the first frame, and the whole process takes 100 frames before the cutscene plays. This means that once the fight starts, it will take 51 frames to update the list. If we enter one frame later on frame 2, it will now take 50 frames. Entering on frame 3 means that there are only 49 frames. Suppose the setup stays the same and initially covers entrance frames 1, 2 and 3. Because the Foggate entrance animation without a cutscene is effectively one frame longer, the setup is also one frame longer, unloading on frames 50 to 52 instead of 49 to 51. 
This means that only entrance frames 2 and 1 are now covered. So that's why repeating bosses can change things. In addition, before the cutscene, we also equipped the bow in the left hand since no other action can be queued out of a cutscene except for two-handing the bow. Hence, players hold left button on their controller before skipping the cinematic. The two-hand is queued frame perfectly, and more toggles are now performed to align them with the AI timer's cycle. This happens precisely here. The player then moosewops and successfully kills Gwyndolin in zero cycles, preventing unnecessary RNG from ruining the fight, and obviously saving a tremendous amount of time compared to Gwyndolin teleporting away even once. While there are already multiple places where this technique is being used, future route developments may see the glitch utilized in even more locations to save time or headaches. Thank you for watching this video about the AI break. Oh, that's... That might be a problem. A glitch that was long misunderstood, but through community efforts, turned from a problem... Uh, stop, King. Stop bulldozering me. ...to a time saver. We've explored the history and origins of this glitch, and shown how it can save valuable time and reduce the amount of luck required in speedrunning categories. We've also discussed some of the intricate details and nuances that make this glitch so interesting. I hope you found this video informative and entertaining, and that you learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and checking out some of my other content. I create videos like this for all of From Software's games, and I'd be thrilled to have you join me on this journey. Thanks again for watching, and as always, have a great day.